Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to Pro Cycling Manager 2021. This is it. We're here. This is the beginning of our career mode series. Last season with PCM20, over 180 episodes as we made our way through the career. And if you've followed that one, if you've followed the channel for a while, you know that for me, this game is too easy on the surface at first glance. So, I play on extreme difficulty, the high, hardest difficulty that this game has to offer. It is supposed to be harder this year. We'll see if that's actually the case or not. But even with that, that handicap, the extreme difficulty is not enough. I still get in and dominate the game quite quickly. I can still have a team with very low budget and win the world tour before too long. And that's what we did last year. So I added a handicap. We didn't just play on extreme difficulty. We took a zero budget continental team and clawed our way inch by inch, mile by mile, and developed the best team in the world. Won multiple Grand Tour victories. This season, we're going to do a different handicap. What that is, is I've formed the World Cycling Center. There actually is one of these in real life. But what we're doing is we have a team made up of riders only outside of the top nations, specifically those outside of the UCI rankings, the nations that have a thousand points or more. There are 29 of those nations. So all the big nations in the sport, we don't have access to that. So I'm limiting the pool. So this development center, this American squad, won't have any Americans on it because that's one of the top 29 squads. Not that they've done fantastic of late, but they are one of the better nations in cycling. And so we're going to go ahead and exclude all of those big time teams, all of those big time riders. And then with a limited pool, from 30 and below in the rankings, we're going to do our best. We're going to get a hold of the best riders I can find. We'll scout within that network, and we'll make a team from that. So big-time hand-holding on this one is that a lot of the riders in the game, the pool of riders, are just going to be completely inaccessible to us. Can I find that diamond in the rough? Can we develop a winner? Without access to the majority of the winners? Well, watch to find out. Speaking of watch to find out, before we jump into this series, let's go ahead and throw that plug in real quick. Like, subscribe, comment, help that YouTube algorithm pick this thing up and get it going. Again, last season, over 180 episodes. In fact, I still have two to finish that series up. Uh, I've been out of town for a couple weeks, so it'll be coming very, very soon. Uh, maybe this weekend, the first of those last two episodes of that series. But I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. It's a custom team. I am using the PCM World database. So their rider ratings, jerseys, stages in various races are all going to be part of this. However, I've taken that database and totally reworked it myself in a few ways. One, custom team. I picked 12 riders at random from those nations outside of that top 29. And that's what we're going to begin with. So this first year, it's a pretty weak team. I do have one okay rider in Aribe, a Japanese rider who's a sprinter. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on him as he'll be kind of the focal point of this first season. And then there's a couple others that are, yeah, they're okay we're okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see how much we can do in this first year. Two, with that custom team, I have my own sponsor. Technically, it's YouTube is that sponsor. Uh, but one key thing that I've changed, but only in a very minor way, is some of the rider ratings. Uh, some of the rider ratings really don't sit well with me. And so I've made some changes. But only with top riders. Lower riders, eh, whatever. Right, no impact. But the, there's a handful of top riders that I just don't quite agree with the ratings that were given. Uh, 
by the group making up the database. So first off, Sam Bennett, arguably one of the two best sprinters in the world right now, but he's not dominant. He wins. He wins when he has a good lead out. He wins when he's in the right position and he has the right amount of energy left. He's got just enough acceleration and then just enough top speed to win. Sure. Consistently, regularly, often. Again, arguably the best, but he's not dominant. He's not dominant in the way that Mark Cavendish was winning every race. He's not dominant in the way that Peter Sagan a few years back was able to win every unusual circumstantial race, as in it was a bit uphill, or there was a bunch of climbing to do on the way to the finish, and a bunch of the sprinters are either totally exhausted or just not there. And then he'd win all of those type of races. There's no total domination. He just wins more often than others. So I bumped him down just a couple points. And it was the acceleration part, because he really doesn't accelerate that fast, in my opinion. He's still got an 80, though. We're not talking about nerfing him. Just brought it down a hair. Nairo Quintana. uh, I actually did a a video on the rider ratings in the default uh, database, and Quintana was massively overrated. Well, he was already nerfed. I nerfed it a hair more. I I brought him down two more points uh, in the mountain rating. Just Quintana, massively overrated. He's only ranked just inside the top 40 in the world right now. Uh, He picked up a couple wins last season, and, and that was a nice bounce back, but outside of that, he's done nothing for many, many years. And they still had him in the top 10 or 15 riders in the world. And he's not that good. Lopez, Moss, Port. All three of them, in my opinion, a bit overrated. Lopez was the highest rated climber in the database. Lopez is not the best climber in the world. He's among the best. He is a, an elite climber, and all three of them are elite climbers. But none of them are as good as they have a reputation for. They don't win. They're there. They compete. They're always around the top 10. But when have those guys won anything? So Lopez Mossport knocked him down just one point. Michael Woods. Michael Woods was the fourth highest rated rider. <clears throat> Sorry, fifth highest rated rider in this database. Since when has Michael Woods been elite? He's great. He's a very, very good rider, very strong rider. Top 25 in the world. But top five? Not even close. I still only knocked him down by two points in his uh, punchiness rating. And then finally, he got in Bernal. Tour de France winner, Giro d'Italia winner, pretty convincing winner. Some would argue best in the world right now. Many would not. Most would uh, would certainly agree that he's up there. And so I moved him up there because he wasn't even in the top 10 rankings. I brought him up <laughs> by one mountain point. That was it. But that's going to make a di- big difference. I also added one resistance point. That's the only changes I made. Now let's go ahead and get into the project. Just a very quick look at the squad. Age is going to be a real factor with this group. Most of the riders are 28, 29 years of age and older, have already switched to the traditional style of training, meaning they're not even going to develop any further than they already are. We have a couple young riders. We don't know their style yet. We've got a couple mid-20s. The only confirmed groundbreaking style rider, which is important, you want to get riders with groundbreaking style because it means they have a lot further to develop generally, is a 58 overall 28-year-old. That's not a great combination. So uh, expectations for this squad, very, very low. Like I said, we have one decent sprinter who's a 31 year old 72 overall he's a 73 75 on the sprint with 62 resistance so getting him to the finish line is going to be challenging but that's the team i've already swapped out staff so we're ready to go uh trying to keep good relations is important 
even if they're not good if there's still some room to develop a bit we'll we'll get what we can out of this group the good news though is in terms of contract there's only four that are already signed up for next season so most of them have expiring contracts the unfortunate part on that is three of the four worst riders on the team are signed up for next season uh, so it's actually our better riders that that are expiring and going to go away uh, the only rider that's making more than minimum is Aribe. so in terms of cost things are very low and we'll be fine on on that part uh, and with a small team it should be easy to keep morale relatively high but as a continental team it's also a little bit more difficult as you can have long breaks in between races but again you came to see some racing let's push forward all right so we're going to take this one right from the start because well it's our first race our jersey is not the one you saw in the bottom corner that's a placeholder for now it's one of my old jerseys from a previous season the the mini jerseys <clears throat> I've, I've tried to create those in the past and and the program that that runs those i've not been able to get run to run properly uh so if anybody else has that uh, I actually could use some assistance, but as we are the World Cycling Center, we, we have a dark gray jersey with the UCI rainbow bands on it. So we're, we've got uh, not a smooth one because you get that as world champion, but we have a uh, angled sleeve with the rainbow bands. Uh, and then we've got little accents of each of the rainbow band colors. Uh, somewhere within the jerseys and there's our the ooh, Japanese champion Aribe okay uh, he is unfortunately on a minus two today it's affecting his resistance and flat rating that's going to hurt us a little bit but let's see Zervis is a decent lead out guy uh, Mugisha is not so Mugisha let's go ahead and protect Aribe, Ralino might be okay. Wang certainly isn't. Let's go ahead and support Zeverus and Shakri. All right, there's our trio that we're going to lead out today. Let's give them a go. So this group, th this is actually our highest rated six riders. So uh, there's not much to it. But in Continental, you never know. There, there's always a chance in Continental. There, there's usually only a limited amount of riders that actually have a decent amount of quality. So our international flavored group is coming from all over the place. And Aribe might be competitive with this. We'll, we'll find out fairly soon. Small break. More riders trying to join it. It's going to make things difficult for a handful of kilometers here. And with a weak peloton like this... If that goes on too long, it could definitely have an impact. But I assume we're going to be in for just scooting on forward straight to the final kilometers. So why don't I do that? Unless things change drastically, I'll see you in the last few K. All right, so far so good. And we're just finally reeling in the breakaway group here with under 15 kilometers to go. You can see they're falling off one at a time. Now the last three away under 13k that was the last little uphill section we've got a little downhill section and then straight on to the finish so now with 11k to go it's about time you can see the pace has really really picked up and this is time for us to uh, have a go now anybody who's watched the channel for a long time knows that i use this style of sprint all the time i haven't had a superior sprinter well in quite a few years because like i said i i, I do the handicaps i work with within a budget or within some sort of constraint where I don't have the best sprinter around. If you have the best sprinter, sure, a little simple late lead out and attack from within somewhere near a front position and you're going to win. Not with the teams that I have, but I know how to get wins. Not that I'll necessarily get one here. I don't know really how good our sprinter is until we can get them head to head. We know that that's the guy and we know that that's going to be our lead out see the only other one topping 70 and it was well the other lead out okay and then these guys it's just down to flat rating and is there any advantage no what about resistance 
Okay, Shokri is the weak one, so we'll have him go first. Okay, we'll get the first couple to gel up. So here's the tactic in a nutshell. It's really simple. Use the full team most of the time. Get out front. Get into a position where the team in a train is leading the race. That way, when we start our sprint, we're starting from the highest advantage and then using to the extreme, going just to everything that you can manage, everything you can get out of the squad, trying to stay in front of the other teams. So that way, when it comes down to your sprint, you're hanging on. And you've got a lead out, so they're not already going solo. You have a lead out. Okay, we are. Use up those gels, and we're already down to 3k. You can just about go at 3k, but really you should be only going at about 2.5. These guys are going too soon. Damien House in here, 2.2. Okay, let's start. Whoa, whoa. Helena, what are you doing way back here? Uh, I thought something looked odd a little bit ago. Okay, this this is not the lead out we needed. Uh, Ralano, I don't know what his deal was, but we're going to put him in the back. And we're definitely starting our sprint. So this is not the advanced position, but we're not in a terrible spot here. Uh, Severus, <laughs> well, here's the problem with this one, is uh, we don't have any space for Uribe. That's the other thing, is you get guys caught out, out of position, and what do you do then? So this first stage, yeah, uh, not what we wanted for this one. Alf Leap is here. Holy cow. Uh, took sixth. Plank guards here. There's some decent uh, riders. We do the get into the run, top the ten. All right, we have 17 kilometers still to go here on stage number two. By the way, we're, it's the Patronus Tour of Langkawi. It's, I believe Malaysia. It might be Indonesia. By the way, both of those nations are on our list. Let's set ourselves up a little bit earlier. Maybe maybe I waited too long, and that's why um, Ralano couldn't get through previously. It's probably the case, but generally with a weak team, you don't want to go too soon because, well, they're a little weak for that. Uh, but again, the later you wait, the more you run into issues like what we, well, ran into. So we're definitely a bit further out. These two, Nagisha, Wang, they're going to be pushing on earlier. Shokri was a bit far behind, but there you go. Yeah, look at that, 94, and he can't even hardly even get out front. 13k, and he's already low on energy. And this is that problem with trying to go too early, is you end up with guys who just aren't capable of doing the job when their ratings are so low. But the that's the name of the game cutbacks. in the early the couple months of that first season is getting to know the riders, getting to know their strengths, getting to know their weaknesses. What are they There's capable of? I mean, how much can they actually pull off? It's a puncture. Trial and error. Every rider is a little different. There's a definite feel. I mean, we're down inside 9K, and we're generally out front now. And we're able to and start pushing a little harder down. here. Let's hope it doesn't jeopardize the rest of his season. The Breakaway's done. We've caught him. We're under 7K. Somebody's come a cropper in the pack. Thank goodness everyone else. Under 6K. So we're we're looking a little better now. 5.5. Shakri. Good the job done. Ralano. The riders just passed the five kilometers road sign. Okay, 4K. He seemed to have neither the energy nor the courage to keep going. Penultimate lead out man. Okay, down to 3K. We're going to start pushing here. All right, service. Sprint. And a rebay. Sprint to finish it off. Oh, he's out of energy, but we've got a little advantage. Nope. Can't hold it. There's a slight uphill at the finish. And there you go. There's a Ribe who has sprint capability, but very low resistance. And that really showed there because anybody with better resistance would have held out a, a lot longer than he did. 
Uh, he's right on on Zervis's wheel, and Zervis has a decent acceleration, but he's not a top sprinter. So the initial acceleration, it's going to hurt Iribe slightly, but it shouldn't have hurt him much to then hold the wheel of Zervis, but it did. He was almost as exhausted as Zervis was, even though there was no gap between them. So Iribe is going to have real issues with the lead out because he has such low resistance. He's capable of a sp as a sprinter. <clears throat> He's got to go pretty late, though, for that to be successful. Again, learning tool. But you can see he was out there. He was competitive. He was near the front. So we've got an eight-stage race. It's stage number three. This is going to be the last one we get in for this first episode, though. So we're going to try again, of course. we we'll give it a go, do what we can. I think we're reeling it in a little bit closer on what this team is capable of. Obviously, that first time was too conservative. Went too late, didn't have a chance. Second time, we went a little too early, even though 2K is not normally early. I mean... When I get to World Tour, oh gosh, Shakri, where are you, dude? Um, okay, we're going to go Mogisha first, even though Shakri, we've already used his gel, unfortunately. How are we doing? Let's see, the team's not even in position. Okay, the Mogisha is out front, so that's good. Uh, coming up 10k to go. There's a couple little hills. Shakri is punchy, so he is going to be pretty quick through there. Pushing through. Mokisha, try to get on, try to break that toe, try to get other teams off our heels. There's still four riders from the break out front. Uh, really got to watch out for that one. Now with 7K to the finish. Start preparing for that. And we're finally making it up onto those guys. If we don't push here, Breakaway would have won today. Okay, 5.5. Aribe, uh, Zervis both took a little punishment from the... That last little punchy section. Downhill finish. Downhill finish. 99 already, now. It's also gel up right now. Okay, we are in that prime position right now. And I, while I didn't want to go sooner, I feel like I'm going to have to today. 3K to go. Okay, on to service. 2K. Okay, a rebay. Slight punishment, but we've got that downhill coming. So we start our sprint here, then take the d downhill. It's going to allow you to push a little harder, a little further, a little deeper. Coming up in that last K. Now, Zervis is out, but Aribe, I don't think he can make it to the finish. Where are we at on that? Oh, we're right in the middle of it. See, we're about. It's still downhill, though. It's still downhill. That's going to last a little bit longer. Got a good strong lead out here. Can we get a podium this time? He's pushing. Uh, he's not quite fast enough. The energy did hold out, though. It did hold out. Deion Smith he takes the win. Crowder, still good. Conditions. Still good. He's still got a top 10. We got top 10 on all three stages. But we're, we're just not the quite there, not quite strong enough. And still race. working on finding that balance with Iribe's such low, low resistance. I mean, it was under 60 today with poor race day condition. And the team as a whole had pretty poor race day condition. So, uh, read the finish pretty well on that one. Just not quite strong enough. That's going to be the nature of the beast this season. Uh, that's that's going to be to be expected. So we'll see a lot of that. But that's the whole point. We're starting handicapped. We're starting with a difficult situation. And we're going to do what we can to pull through and make something of this team. Find those diamonds in the rough. Find those international cyclists from the smaller nations and see if we can't find some champions. That is going to do it for this opening episode. Like I said at the beginning, do please like, subscribe, comment to help the algorithm get this thing going. 
because there's 180 episodes to come and it's going to take your assistance in these first few episodes to really make that happen for that algorithm to get out there and get beyond just the scope of my existing subscribers but especially subscribers you know the routine you know the deal thanks for tuning in be sure to hit that like button i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there bye for now